church tonight. Let's all get a hymn book set. Turn to page number 316. And we'll sing all three verses of I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Let's all stand. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The road go with me, still I will follow. No need go with me, still I will follow. No need go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you. You may be seated. Does anybody have any prayer requests tonight that we didn't, the preacher didn't get? Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Before we pray. All right, if there's nobody else, then we're going to start our prayer time tonight. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Father, for the opportunity we have to be in your house tonight, Father. We thank you for each one that's come out, Father. We pray, Father, tonight we'll get a blessing as we study your word together. We pray tonight, Father, that you'll be with the family of Troy Neal and also the family of David uh, Hughes. You'll be real to them tonight, Father. Touch them and comfort them all. It's only you can, Father, in the hour of need. Also be with Emerson Cates, a six-year-old who's in uh, Brenner's Hospital. We pray you'll touch him tonight, Father, and that you'll help them and be with the families they look after him, Father. Also be with Kay Alverson and her health needs tonight, Father. We have many needs on our prayer list tonight, Father. We want to pray for each one tonight, Father. We want to pray for our pastors. He leads us and flock here to your church, Father. We pray you'll touch him, guide him, and lead him in the way you should go, Father. Be with our church attendance. We thank you for what attendance we've had, Father. We just pray it'll continue to grow, Father. Thank you for our tithing and giving and more than meets the need here at your church, Father. Also be with our deacons and trustees as they make decisions about the way the church should be run, Father. We just pray you'll guide them, Father, and as you'll help them as they make decisions. Thank you, Father, that you go help us sell, sell this property and give us in our new building out on our new land, Father. We just pray you'll be with Blair Construction and the Plains and Mike Maracas, the architect, because they all work together, Father, to design the building, Father. We thank you for your eternal broadcast and that ministry which spreads the gospel around the world. May it continue to be used for your honor and your glory, Father. Also for our WTBI broadcast in Greenville, South Carolina, Father, we thank you for our listeners down there, Father, and pray you uh, help them as they listen to the broadcast each night. We thank you for the ministry here at our church, Father, Believers Bible Institute, our Sunday School and Teachers, our Youth Ministry, Children's Churches, and Tuesday Bible Study. We just pray they'll continue to grow, Father, and you use them as we teach each other about uh, the way things should be done, Father, as we learn from your word. We pray for the peace of Israel, Father. We pray you take care of that situation over there. Be with our president, the nation, and the economy. Also, Father, be, be with them as they make decisions for our country, Father. We pray you, they'll seek your guidance in each decision that they make. Thank you uh, for taking care of that. Also, be with the conflicts in the Ura Ukraine, Iran, Iraq. North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. We just pray, Father, you bring our soldiers back home safe, Father. Keep them safe, Father. They be with their families as they're here, Father. And they're also serving, Father, because they're missing their loved ones. We thank you for our visitors and our new converts, Father. We thank you that our visitors come, keep coming, Father. And we pray we you be with our new converts as we train them in the way they should go, Father. Now, Father, we have many needs for salvation tonight. We will lift each one up to you tonight, Father. We pray you be with Nick Albino with Carl Amos, Wade Ayers, and also with me with his health, with Brandon and parents, Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy and Jamie Connor, Ian Crutchfield, Bobby Dalton, who also has cancer, Clint Davis, Terry Deer, who also has cancer, Robert Durr, Lester Dodson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dutton, Tom Hardy, Jesse Horbett, 
Brandon Gotze, the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, Billy King, Mike King, and Stephen King, uh, Ryan, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, Buster Lewis, Sean McCall, Chase and Haley Minter, Darren Moore, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark and Brian Reagan, Caitlin and Victor Sanchez, Mark and Timothy Shirao, uh, Dylan Smith, Sean and Bobby Stout, Cindy, Kimberlin, uh, Madeline, Megan, and Melvin Thompson, Dustin Turner, Buddy Travis, Joyce Watson, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. We pray, Father, for each one of these individuals. Father, someone will go and break the bread of life with them, Father, and tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. And Father, we have many needs that, that need to, uh, individuals that need to get back in church and be under your word, Father. We just pray you bring them back into the fold, Father. Be with Connor Barnett, the Clary family, Buddy and Carol Galden, Cassie and family, DJ and Chelsea, uh, Gary Graham, Kirsten McBride, Jonathan Reed, Ben Tickle, Daryl Tickle and family. <clears throat> We pray for each one of them to get back in church, Father, and, and be under your word. Father, we have many health needs tonight, Father. We want to lift them up to you and pray you'll take care of them yeah, according to your will, Father. We with Irene Bell. We with uh, myself and my kidneys. We with Earl Connor, Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Linda Durham, Joseph, Faith Ann Hawley, Audrey Hoskins, and Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Beverly Keene, and Ezekiel Lewis, who has RSV, Angeline Merriman, Shelby Martin, Gary and Kathy McCullum, Betty Mitchell, who has blood clots, Toby Moore, Stan and Shannon Moorefield, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols, who has asthma, Loretta Nichols with upcoming surgery, Angie and Billy Oaks, Vincent Sarah Piotta, Alan Sarah Podobinski, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Vicki Reed, Cindy Rutherford, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snows, good to see Bill with us tonight, uh, Carol Tickle, Ricky Toller, Angel Underwood with upcoming surgery, Anita Warwick with a foot and back, Evelyn Wallington, Leon and Connie Wiles, Lois Witt, Mary Sue Woodson, Harold Yancey, Rowland and Betty Yates, and Amy Young. We pray, Father, for the individuals that their health needs, Father, pray you watch over them and bless them, Father, and take care of their health. We also lift up those around the us with diabetes, Father. We pray you, you'll help them keep their blood sugars under control, that they can do the things they need to do for you and for their families, Father. Be with Amanda. Ron Allen, Sherry Bray, Logan Saroma, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Oaks, Rod Rains and Lee Rains, Danny Wark, and Wendy Yancey. We also lift those up around the bass with COPD, Father. We pray you'll be with Mike Mills and Jim Phillips, Sheila Richardson, and Amanda Watson. And Father, we will lift up many of those in the nursing homes tonight, Father. We know there are many people in the nursing home. We just pray you'll comfort them, Father, as you be with them, and you'll give them a touch from you tonight, Father. Be with Dale Leffler in Ohio, at Roman Eagle, be with Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Ruth Newman, Betty Ray, Francis Robertson, George Thomas, and Donna Wagner, at Shadham Rehab, be with Vidal Crane and Michelle Johnson, and at Liberty, be with Kyle Baldwin. And we lift up those round of us with uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, Father. We pray you be with Mary Malone tonight. We lift up now, Father, our friends, family, and neighbors who need a touch from you tonight, Father, and pray you be with each one. Be with Austin and Vinnie Beckley, Carol Bonet, Phyllis Clay, Annie Cleary, Raymond Cleary, who's at Moses Cone, Gene Connor, uh, Mark Francisco on his back, Amy Ferguson, Jesse Goff, uh, David Hart, Barbara Hines, Toby Hines, Mary Heiss, Ridge Kloss, Nick Madigan in his heart, Chelsea and Danny Martin, Jeff Morris, Keith Moorefield, Donald Owen, Dale Ray, Florence Richardson, Charlie Robertson, Vicki Schilling, who has cancer, Shirley Shive, Glenn and Nancy Sladen, Alan and Shirley Taylor, the Vickers family, Garland and Preston Watson, Chris and Steve Wilson, and Jim White. Father, we pray you'll reach down, touch these individuals, restore their health, Father, be with the families looking after them, give them the strength they need for each day. For we ask these things in your name. Our Father in heaven, as we continue with the prayer of the Lord, pray for all the ones who have cancer, Lord, just touch them, reach them. Uh, give them strength, Lord, and just uh, give them peace and comfort. Joni Atkins, Patria Atkins, Kathy Allen, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robert, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burt, Butcher, Butchett, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Carolyn, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cook.
Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Brenda Davis, Melanie Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Kevin Dunn, Jeremy Ferguson, Marie Fullis, Tammy Fries, Amanda Gladder, April Golden, Brenda Gregory, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Shell Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Anita Hyden, James Holt, Kevin Hopkins, Carlton Hoskins, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Jason Long, Dan Mays, Linda Mahanos, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Tony Phillips, Marie Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, Donald Ricketts, David Robinson, Patricia Robinson, Neil Rogers, Linda Wright, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Margaret White, Frank Wilkinson, Dave Wilkinson. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, just be with them and watch over them, Lord. I pray for all the unspoken requests, just answer their prayers and let it be your will as far as that end, just continually just answer the prayers. Jenny Bear, Talia Bethel, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Manny Graham, Mallory Hamlet, Sean Teresa Horvitz, Janice Hodges, Kenny Van Hunt, Eston Lewis, Shelby Martin, Mike and Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Kelsey Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Bonnie Rains, Daisy, Nick Fitzpatrick, Mike Tickle, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Vipperman, Matthew and Chi, Williams, Vicki Reed, Daniel Roach, and Robert Yancey Lord. I pray for all the ones who are off in college, just be with them, watch over them, use them in a mighty way, help them to be a light to people, Lord, and just let them get through school. And Taylor, Adeline, Adeline, Becca Clarity, Elisa, Bradley Gossie, Carlton Hoskin, Trinity Langley, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Massilia, Caleb Pooley, Mary Sue Woodson, Tony, Wood, Tony Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey, Jason Yancey, Lord, pray for our fall festival, Lord, pray for that to be a good turnout, pray for souls to be saved and lives to be changed, Lord, pray for the meetings and concert on November the 6th, for that to go well, Lord, pray in Jesus' name, of course, also for souls to be saved, pray for Jeff Worley, when he comes, Lord, that it'll be a packed out house and that we'll be revived and that souls will be saved and lives will be changed, Bobby Lee as well, Lord, help us keep focused on soul winning, Lord, Lord, pray for all those who have been saved, save, Lord, just continue to help to grow and nurture and admonition of you, Lord, and Lord, pray for so, two souls that got saved last week, Lord. Just be with them. Continue to love them, grow, and nurture and admonition of you. Lord, I pray for all the missionaries right now that we support, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that you just continue to use them, Lord, in a mighty way in this lost and dying world. Tamara Aldridge, Virginia Assembly of Independent Baptists, Randy Ashcraft, ba Beacon Baptist Missions, Glenda Al, Emmanuel Bala, Evangelist Earl Clarkson, John Mavis Coleman, Mike Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Keith Cullors, Joseph Delk, Krista Jackimo, Fortina Trotez, Faye Dykes, David Gibbs, Virgil Galen, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lois, Lewis Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Lester LaBugan, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahano, Sterling Rescue Missions, Nathan Miller, National Pastors of Cuba, National Pastors of Pakistan, Dr. John London Mitchell, Alan Nye, Matt Peckoff, Nick Peckoff, David Lawson, Ken Ream, Evangelist Jeff Worley, David Ritchie, Demetrio Rodrigo, Roloff Ministries, Jason Sorwell, Tabernacle Children's Home, Hal Williams, and David Weiss. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name be with each and every last one of them, Lord. <clears throat> We'd like to remember tonight the pastors and evangelists that were able to help them, Lord, and, and to help them with their needs that they have in their church, and Lord, that we provide help with them through our, our, our church. We have Scott A.G., Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, Chris Esterline, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Flanagan, Jerry Foley, Donnie Glass, Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry and Donna Johnson, John Kinsey, Derek and Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, Steve Lamb, Joel Logan, also Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan and Tim Shelley, Davy Shelton, Mark Snowden, also Donnie Stevens and Philip Stout, the Tobert family, Brian Warren, and also Jeff Woods. Now may we pray for the, all of these pastors and evangelists that we help and support. Heavenly Father, tonight again, we thank you for this great opportunity we have to be in your house. Lord, we pray for all those that's not here tonight that wanted to be here, and we pray, Lord, that you'd help each one 
if they're sick or whatever the needs might be, Lord, that they'd be able to be here the next time that the, the doors are open. We pray now for each of these evangelists and pastors that we, we support, Lord. We pray, God, you supply all the needs, that you'd help them, Lord, as only you're able to do. We pray also, Lord, that you give them souls for their labors, Lord, and let them know that we're supporting them and that the work is not in vain. Being a, a pastor on evangelists like that is one of the hardest jobs. So we thank you for them, and we pray that you continue to keep them healthy, safe, and strong in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, again, we say that we love you. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for our church, for all the members, for our pastor. We pray for him each night and day, Lord. We pray you'll continue to keep a hedge about him and keep him, Lord, just keep on keeping on for the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, again, we love you and thank you for all that you do for us, keeping us safe. Everything you do, we, we thank you and love you. For us in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all things. Amen. Amen. Good evening. This is from John Coleman in Toten Nodal Nations. It says, Love, prayers, and blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you for your prayers and mission support during the summer months. God allowed us to be able to help over 150 children with backpack, back to school supplies and copy of God's Word in each school backpacks. They were all thankful. So that's pretty cool. They got touched with all those. Prayers are needed for a renovation of Yvonne's house in the villages of Colic due to bad storms. Her home is in need of complete renovation. Yvonne and her children and grandchildren are now living with other family members. All of her household items had to be moved out and most likely have to be replaced due to storage conditions. Please keep her keep them in prayers. I must share this praise and say thank you to, you to God. A young lady we call Taj from the village of Santa Rosa. I have had worship service in her home, mother and her grandmother's home. She is 30 years old. She recently had to have a liver and kidney transplant. She had to have her gallbladder removed. I visited her in the hospital. She committed her life to the Lord through salvation. We pray God had provided a liver and kidney, which is cool. You know, God provided a liver and kidney. She is now recovering from all her surgeries. Someone said that God performed a miracle, which she did. You know, I mean, she come to Christ and she got saved and the Lord provided her with that so she can live longer. I pray Tosh will live the rest of her life for the Lord. Please keep her in your prayers. In closing, once again, thank you for all your love, prayers, encouraging, and support. John and Mavis Coleman. Thank you, Brother Sean. Let's all get a hymn book set now. We'll turn to page number 259. Sing the first, second, and last verse of Jesus Saves.
Let's be faithful in our giving. And let's remember to, everything comes in on Wednesday night goes to our Wednesday night fun in order to take care of our speakers and our uh, concerts and all the good things we have. So let's be faithful in our giving. Since Brother Kim made the long walk and made all that effort, we'll let him come to the platform and ask God's blessings on the offering tonight, please, sir. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege and honor to be here in your house again tonight. Thankful for everyone who uh, made the effort to come out and they asked that you would bless them for the efforts they made. We ask you that you would just take this offering we're about to receive and just help it to continue to further your kingdom. Bless our pastor, give him the words we need to hear. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> Don't resist the authority that God has put in your life. 
If they do you wrong, God will take care of that. Say amen. Nebuchadnezzar found that out the hard way, out grazing in the field and growing feathers. Uh, God takes care of those who do his people wrong. Amen. Now tonight we're going to start with opportunity for good. Why do we submit to the authorities placed in our life? And again, when I say authorities, I'm not just talking about government. I'm talking about in the church, in the home, on the job. Uh, Romans 13, 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then, be, um, then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is what? Good, and thou shalt have the praise of the same. So God said the main purpose for authority was to promote good. Doesn't always work that way. And that's sad, but it's true. But most of the time it promotes good. It does good. It does what's right. But then there are times when it does do what's wrong. So God said, look, not everything's perfect here, but look for the opportunity to do good. To do right. To be pleasant in God's eyes. This verse is clearly saying that rulers will not stop the goodness of God's will, but in the end they will do the opposite of their goal to hinder righteousness, and they will be a terror to themselves. God can turn that thing around. God can handle that whole situation. You just keep doing good and keep doing what's right. Be respectful and be faithful, and God will be faithful to you these leaders will eventually shoot themselves in their own foot. Watch any debates last night? Sometimes these evil people shoot themselves in the foot, do they not? And uh, that's what God's trying to say. Just trust me. It's all going to work out for right. Don't look at what you see. Believe what you know. Let me say that again. Don't look at what you see. Believe what you know to be true. And in the process of everything transpiring, it's an opportunity, whether things are good or bad, it's an opportunity for you and I to be a testimony for Christ by being faithful to his directives in the word of God. Just do what God says do. I was talking to somebody tonight, and I looked at him and I said, I'm going to work with you. And you're going to learn to do what I tell you to do. You're all awful quiet in here wondering who it is, aren't you? None of your business. And that person looked at me like, we'll see. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you're going to be something for God, you've got to do it God's way. Say amen. You can't do it your way. You have to do it God's way. And in the process of doing it, doing it God's way, you are putting up the signs and you're putting out the wonders that make people see that God's right and the world is wrong. Worldly leaders are wrong and godly leaders are right. Their power as leaders is a temporary and temporal power. They're not going to be in office forever. They're not going to be there in power forever. Why? Because life moves on. Things change. Rules change. God is an eternal and omnipotent power, so why should we fear if we have real faith that God's in control. It's all going to work out his way, so don't get upset. Don't get flustered. Don't get uh, ready to throw in the towel and join the other side, as they say. No, don't do that. Stay faithful. We're to do what's right, and God will bless us and praise us for our faith and our faithfulness. So take the opportunity, by faith, to just do Good. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Look at the screen. For even hereunto you are called. God has called you. And if God called you, he's got a plan for you. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Jesus didn't have a perfect life. He was murdered. He was beaten. He didn't have a perfect life. And he had to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. He had to pray, not my will, but thine be done. And so he left us an example to follow in his steps to still be good while bad things are happening to you. Stay righteous when everything goes wrong. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. My mama used to call that back talk. I asked her one time.
time. I said, why do you call it back talk? Because when you do it, you're going to get the back of my hand. Back talk. Mm -hmm. She told me one time, you got the mouth of a horrible kid. Every time I say something to you, you got something to say about it. Mm -mm, that's not the way to be. Amen or oh me. Now we've all done it. That's why I have, a, have paid a lot of business bills in my life. Mm -hmm. Listen, you don't have to say something every time something happens. In today's society, it's cool to be a smart aleck. It's still not cool with God. It is, does not please God for us to be sassy mouth, back talkers, back biters for that matter. You don't have to say something every time something happens just to be heard. Sometimes you're better off not to be heard. Silence is golden in God's economy. Sometimes you just need to be quiet. He said, reviled, or not again, when he suffered, he threatened not. I thought about it the other day. I think I'm going to keep a notebook in that desk back there. And every time I hear somebody threaten somebody else, I'm going to write it down. And then when I get a notebook full, I'm going to put it out in a book form. <laughs> Threats made in the house of God. Because believe me, I've heard some wild threats made in the house of God. Bible says right here, very clearly, that we are not to threaten each other. Mighty quiet, but a lot of giggles going around in here. We're not to threaten each other, but commit himself to him that judges right, righteously. God didn't fight back. Jesus didn't cut Malchus's other ear off. He didn't say, well, bless God, Peter got one. I'll get the other. He didn't say that. He reached down and put Malchus's ear back. Now, somebody cut my ear off, I'm not going to have those same thoughts that Jesus had. I, I'm not. I'm not going to have the same thoughts as Jesus had. But let me tell you something. We're not to threaten one another. We're not to revile. If people treat us bad, they'll get theirs in time. Don't blow your testimony trying to get evil, even with an evildoer. Don't waste your time. Now, Jesus didn't fight back at his trials. He laid his life in the hands of God the Father. He knew and believed the Father in heaven had a perfect plan, and he trusted his Father enough to put his hands into the work of the Father and what the Father was trying to do, his life. He believed the Father would justify him in the end, and he did it at the resurrection, and he'll also do it at the great white right throne judgment. Trust me. I hear a lot of these politicians say some things that just, I mean, run shivers down my spine because I know they're not stopping to think one day, they're not going to be in their office anymore. They're not going to have that political power. They're going to be standing before Almighty God, hopefully at the judgment seat of Christ, but if not, at the great white throne judgment, and either place, they're going to give an account for what that big mouth just said. And I think the biggest sin, I've said this before and I'll move on, but I've I, I got I to gotta say it. The biggest sin in the church today is not drugs, alcohol, and drinking. I know gossip ain't perfect in the church, but that's not the biggest sin in the church today. The biggest sin in the church today is ignorance of the Word of God. Because if you knew the Word of God, we wouldn't do some things we do. Okay, I had to prod it, but I got it. Amen. It's the truth. Ignorance of the Word of God. Jesus knew the promises of the Father, so he trusted him. If you know the promises of the Father, no matter what happens to you outside, you got peace inside. Now those men are eternally in hell that judge Jesus, and Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Now, C was opportunity to be good. Let's look at D. Office is for governing. Look at verse 4. For he is the minister of God. Whether he wants to be or likes it or not, God put him where he is. That's what that's saying. God put him there to do good. If he does evil, he's going to pay for it. But God put him in that position to do good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Be very afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. 
God has created leadership in the home, in the, in the neighborhood, in the country, on the job, in the school, to keep order. Now look, let's face something straight up. There is nobody in this world, I don't care what position they are, in leadership or followership who's perfect. There's no perfect president. There's no perfect governor. There's no perfect congressman. No perfect senator. No perfect mama. No perfect daddy. No perfect pastor. No perfect boss. Get over yourself. We get this righteous indignation because somebody in leadership done me wrong. What? Of course they did. They're human. Nobody is perfect. And look, every last one of us was raised different. None of us are raised alike. So none of us are going to turn out the same. So we've got to understand that when somebody who's our leader slips and, and treats us wrong, don't be shocked and act like you're the first one. That's life. We've got an ace in the hole. We've got God in heaven. And he's going to work all this out in the end. And this is going to be shorter than eternity. We can make it through this life because eternity is going to be whoo, longer than just living in this world. So thank God that no matter what happens in this life, whether it's fair or unfair, I was reading the newspaper this afternoon. Well, not the newspaper. Nobody reads the newspaper anymore. Everybody goes on the Internet and reads the newspaper. So I was on the Internet. And, of course, I'm doing my daily thing of checking the obituaries, make sure I'm not in there. And I saw this young fellow's obituary in South Boston. And I said, he sure looks like somebody I remember. But I remember that name. So I started reading the obituary. Come to find out, it was the brother of one of Brandon's high school friends. That's why I looked like somebody I thought he looked like. And 20 years old, he had died. I got to thinking about that. I don't know if the family saved or not. I don't know if they know the Lord. But I got to thinking, you know, some people are going to say, that's not fair he died at 20 years old. And you know what? They're right. It's not fair for somebody to die young. Amen? We should all hope to live to be old like Mike Mills. <laughs> old and decrepit. You know, we ought to all hope to be, you know, old one day. But life's not fair. Life's not fair because we live in a wicked world. So we can't anticipate perfection. See, that's what's wrong with some of us. We don't tolerate imperfection around us, but we will tolerate imperfection in us. That's a problem. We expect everybody else to be perfect, but we ain't got to be. Oh, yes, you do. You got to walk a chalk line just like everybody else has got to, and you're not going to make it just like everybody else is not going to make it. Nobody's perfect. Stop putting that pressure on each other to be perfect because we're just not. We're just not. Now, God's intention is placing a ruler for the benefit of good of all men as a leader. It doesn't always work. God's intention was right. His direction is right. But sometimes imperfect man messes up the will of God. That's the problem. The problem is man has a free will, <clears throat> whether it be in a marriage or in the home or in the school, the political world or on the job. We should fear our leaders when we break the law or commit a crime. When that blue light comes on in the back of your windshield, don't get indignant. That's stupid. You got to do like my daddy did. I'll never forget when I was just a kid. It was Mother's Day. And we was going to see my grandma in South Boston. How many of y'all know where the railroad track is between South Boston and Halifax? Okay. My daddy jumped that railroad track. <laughs> on a Ford LTD. He was in a hurry to get to Mama's house, 
and get some of mama's cooking. He was in a hurry. But there was a policeman hiding behind the barn over there. And Daddy looked in his rear view mirror and he saw the blue lights and he just started shaking his head. And I won't tell you what mama was doing. I won't tell you what she was doing. But my daddy wasn't stupid. He didn't act bold and brazen when that policeman come up to that window. He didn't act like he hadn't done nothing wrong because he had definitely done something wrong. My daddy did the only thing a human being has got any sense would do. He started crying. <laughs> my mama's sick. It's mama's day. I'm going to see my mama. And that policeman, I guess he was just soft-hearted. He said, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to let you go. But I'm going to follow you. And if you do anything wrong between here and your mama's house, I'm going to get you. My daddy was a perfect angel from right there in Halifax all the way to Riverdale. He was perfect. He'd have been arrogant, and he'd have been boisterous. He'd have got a ticket this long. But see, he got humble. He had better gotten humble after jumping in railroad tracks. He had better got humble after Mama done all the, Mama done give him enough for the place we ever got to the door that he didn't. He paid enough for he ever got there. <clears throat> but he didn't get no ticket that day. But the policeman's put there for your protection. Say amen. Are all policemen perfect? No. Are all leaders perfect? No. But God is. Say amen. So it's a leader's responsibility to keep the law in order for the ranks of the people. As a good and faithful leader, he's a representative of God of heaven, rewarding the good and punishing the evil. And a leader is to govern people by the law in a fair and a just manner to bring the people into righteousness and to ter deter them from g doing evil and breaking the law. Because man's even smart enough to know as dumb as man is, we've got to have some rules on us to keep us in line or we'll be in anarchy. And we'll be doing things we've got no business and people will die because of it. People will get hurt because of it. You may even get hurt yourself. An officer position of leadership is to govern, rule, oversee, and administrate justice and equity, not for just one or two of the people, but for all the people. Now E, look at verse 5. Obedience will make one guiltless. If you don't do no wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. Amen? Wherefore, you must, be, uh, must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. You know, we do ourselves more harm than good by breaking the law and breaking rules because you feel guilty and it's on your mind all the time. And it just, it, it works on you. To make a leader's job effective and to ensure that the nation, home, school, or business stays on the right path of righteousness and leads to the way and the will of Almighty God, we are set to be subject to the rule of law and our leaders not just to avoid punishment for doing evil, but we may hold for, a, a, for God a guiltless testimony in the world we live in. You don't just not do wrong and stay out of trouble. You do right so that your testimony will shine for God. And listen, obedience will make one guiltless. And if you just do what's right, they can't point a finger at you and say you did wrong. We want to have a pure testimony. Submitting to authority not only keeps us safe among men, but it it keeps us in a useful place and a useful state for Almighty God. Obey the rules so God can use you. Obey the rules so God can take your life and make the best out of it. There's a lot of good preachers that's gone wrong through the years because they got discouraged, defeated, disgusted, or maybe arrogant and pompous, and they messed up and they lost their testimony, and they, they were done. They were done. A lot of good Christians sitting in the pew, same thing. Lost their testimony because they didn't strive to be obedient. You can never be guilty of breaking the law if you never break one. Numbers 32, 22. Now, we read this verse all the time, Numbers 32, uh, 23, but we hardly ever read 32, 22. Let's look at 32, 22. And the hand, land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be what? Guiltless before the Lord. They did what God asked them to do. 
and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. Just do what's right, obey my orders, obey my rules, and I'll take care of you. You can't ask for a better deal than that. Say amen. But if you don't, then comes verse 23. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Okay? The first verse is better than the second one. Just do what's right, and you never have to deal with verse 23. You never have to deal with things being found out. Just cross your T's and dot your I's like you're supposed to, and you won't have anything to worry about. F, obligation to give. Paul makes it very clear we're obligated as citizens. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna like me. You're obligated to pay your taxes. You're obligated. Matthew 22, 17. Tell us, therefore, what thou what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is the image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. You can bet if somebody don't pay their taxes, they ain't paying the tithe either. You're supposed to pay both. Some people say, well, I'll pay my tithes after I pay my taxes. Uh-uh. You tithe on the first fruits. Then you pay your taxes. And then you pay your other bills. You see, I don't have time to go through all seven of these tonight, but I'm going to go through a couple real quick. First of all, the rectors in verse 6a, for this cause pay tribute also for the, uh, for also they are God's ministers. The word tribute there is the word force. A load is born, a tax properly, an individual assessment on a person's property or tribute. Rector is right. You owe your taxes. You may not like when the county or the city raises your personal property tax, and nobody does. And nobody does. We'd love to see them go down, but nobody ever sees that either, do you? Not going to happen. We're currently, look at the next part of verse 6, attending what? Continually upon this very thing. A content, attending continually is one Greek word, pros kartero. It means to be earnest towards, to preserve, be constantly diligent, to attend assiduously all the exercises, uh, to adhere closely to a social superior. I'll make this as simple as I can without being complicated. <laughs> Pay your taxes on time. I heard one lady one time says, I'm not paying my taxes on time. I'll pay them after Christmas. Then after Christmas, they didn't have any money to pay it. Amen or amen. Just pay your bills on time. I didn't learn this till I was older. But as I began to get older, began to learn when the, when, the, when the bill comes in the mailbox, go in the house, write the check, pay it, and put it back in the mailbox right then. <laughs> then you're never late. I got a mail, piece of mail one time years ago and said I was late. I said, I ain't late. I paid that bill. I got on the phone. I chewed that number out, and before she got done, she chewed me out because <laughs> I hadn't paid it. I'd set it aside, and I forgot about it, because I'm a human. So the first one of y'all sticks your nose up there at me, you just as guilty as I am. <laughs> Ain't none of us perfect on that border. You have to learn as you grow older, pay your bills when you get them. Don't set them aside. Don't stack them up. Pay as soon as, when do it taste? You get so tired of getting out the mailbox and doing your own, or she ought to quit making them bills. <laughs> y'all dead crowd. But I, 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 when I get a bill, I go to the house, I write a check, put the stamp on, stick my black bag, as soon as we go to the mailbox, boom, it goes right in the mail. Why? Because you need to be recurrently or current on your bills and pay them. Render, in verse 7, I render therefore to all their dues. The word render in the Greek means to give away, give up, give over, give back. Boy, that's a whole lot of give, isn't it? That's a whole lot of give, isn't it? That's what you got to do. You got to give. You got to pay. You got to render. You got to yield. 
We're to give the dues or taxes that are requested in appreciation and remuneration for the services provided by our leaders and their government. Next time you get mad because of tax, think about the roads. Somebody's got to pay to have roads fixed. Somebody's got to keep the sewage moving. Somebody's got to keep the garbage moving. Am I right? Your government does that. Your government does that. And is it perfect? No, it's not a perfect science, but you know what? I, I'm glad I, I can take my garbage to the garbage dump. I'm glad there's somebody there to, to watch my garbage going to the garbage dump. I ain't figured that out yet, but they do. They watch everything you do. They stand there. If you live in the county, you know what I'm talking about. They watch you. They throw your garbage away. Got somebody watching everything you do. But hey, that's okay. We need to learn as citizens to render, to give what's expected. You can complain a little bit, but pay anyway. You're fixing to have complaint day in just a few days. What, two weeks away? Come on, y'all. What's complaint day? Vote day. Go vote. If you don't vote, shut up. You ain't got no right to say nothing. <laughs> Revenue, in verse 7, be tribute to whom tribute is due. They're to give our ta well, we're to give our taxes from our earnings to provide revenue to meet the needs of our nation and our community. That's a good thing if it works and people do it fairly. And we must understand that our duty as citizens is to show appreciation for the provision and the protection that's provided. Uh, ritual, custom to whom custom. We're to show reverence and respect to those it's due to as honor of their service and their leadership. I don't care who your governor is, your president is, I don't care who your pastor is. I don't care who your mom and daddy is. You owe them respect. Your boss. You may not agree with your boss. You may not like what your boss is doing, but he's your employer. You don't have a right to disrespect him. We think in America we have a right to disrespect each other. Show me that in the Bible. I don't care about the Constitution. Show me where that's in the Bible. No, we don't have a right to disrespect each other. Say Amen. And then respect, from fear to whom fear. That word, word uh, fear is respect. We're to respect the position they hold. We're to respect the power they retain. We're to respect the pressure they bear in our stead. We're to respect the price they pay to be our leaders. Every president, I don't care whether it's Republican or, or Democrat, take a picture of them when they go in office and take a picture when they come out. The pressure of the office is enough to kill them. I'm being serious with you. You got into that marriage young, but you come out old. <laughs> By the time you have them dozen kids and pay all them bills and get them through college and high school and amen. You, hey, the pressure of the position. You know, I, I appreciate my mom and daddy more after I become a mom and daddy than before I was a mom and daddy. Then I understood what they went through and the pressures they felt. All right, one more real quick. Then regard to honor to whom honor. We're to show dignity to those who are placed in authority. Dignity. We're to have enough self-respect to act in an honorable way in the presence of our leaders and our governors, our parents, our, 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 our bosses, and, and everybody in our life who's a leader in our life. This, is, this truth has been replaced with hatred and anarchy today. People today feel they can hate and disrespect anyone they disagree with. That is not true, and that is wrong. It is definitely wrong. This is fundamentally wrong and is ripping the fabric of our nation into shreds today. And instead of regard, we show disregard and disrespect. And we've got to change that thing around. If we don't teach this next generation coming up a different way to do things, we're not going to have a country if the Lord tarries. It's going to be gone just like the Roman Empire was gone. It's going to be gone. You can disagree without being disagreeable or disrespectful. Stand to your feet. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Father, I pray tonight as we look at this message that we'll just take a few minutes tonight, Lord, and come to an old-fashioned altar and just, first of all, ask God to forgive us if we disrespect anyone. But, Lord, then come to the altar and say, God, help me respect those leaders in my life, whether it's my parents, my spouse, whether it's my boss, my pastor, my uh, congressman, senator, assemblyman, president, whoever it is, God, help us to learn to show respect. And Lord, when we have respect, we won't have a problem praying for our leaders and trusting them. And Lord, we have to get back to an old-fashioned way 
of harming ourselves because Lord these are your directives this is your direction of leadership and your direction is to promote righteousness and restrain evil and Lord if we don't respect our leaders and we don't revere our government and we don't do have respect for those things we're ripping the fabric of our own nation and our own homes and our own jobs and our own churches into shreds God help us get back to being respectful people and honor and glorifying you most of all then we'll honor and glorify others in Jesus name heads are bowed, eyes are closed as they pray if you need to pray come just pray whether for yourself or somebody else just come right now and ask God to work in our lives and make us better citizens better Christians better Christ like people